So, Alex, we're talking today because you're using a still camera to shoot video. How are you right, doing that's that? Right, that's correct. It's been a long process. I started out with the uh, 600D from Canon. And uh, basically, I, from that, I learned about uh, Magic Lantern and also about the raw video, raw video capabilities, which they started introducing, I think, mid-2013. So then I quickly realized that uh, the 600D wasn't um, built for, basically the SD card uh, writer and reader was too slow for the raw data being put out of the camera. So I decided to go for the 50D because with that I could get a much uh, better uh, data rate with the compact flash card. So that's basically how I found out how to uh, record video on a still photo camera. Uh, what kind of challenges have you had with the Magic Lantern implementation? There's, I mean, inst installation was simple enough, and uh, but the main problems, of course, are just there's overheating with the 50D, uh, so you have to be careful with that. It can easily reach 52 Celsius, which is about 125 Fahrenheit, after maybe 10, 15 minutes of continuous recording. So that's an issue you have to watch out for. You don't want to overheat your sensor. And if it, if it does overheat, it, it will eventually shut down and uh, you'll, you'll lose what you were recording. But uh, yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for. When you're shooting a film as opposed to a live event, do you find that you even come up against that 10 or 15 minute uh, thermal barrier? Or are you doing one shot uh, at a time and shutting the camera off? How do you handle it's, that? It's not, it's not just the uh, continuous uh, recording. Uh, the heating, I believe, comes from the live view, which has to be enabled to record the, the raw video. So I, I believe that in combination with the uh, continuous recording uh, causes the overheating, but it's pretty much inevitable. And the only solution I have at the moment is just to have a second camera, which isn't very practical, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the best solution at the moment. Or just to power off, let it rest for a few minutes. You can pick this up for $350 on eBay right now. So the, right. the body of the camera. Right. So it's not a problem. <laughs> have you actually ever experienced the camera shutting off in the middle of a take? What it does is it will lock up, and uh, it completely locks up. You have to take out the batteries. You have to turn it off and reset it. So it, I, I don't believe it has an auto shut off function, but it, it locks up and just quits functioning. Do you have multiple cards with Magic Lantern on it? That's the interesting thing. It, it runs alongside the Canon firmware, so you're not actually modifying their firmware. Uh, and you can put it on as many cards as you like, and if you don't actually use the card that has the Magic Lantern installed in it, it's not going to run. It just will run as it always has. That is to say a still camera. Yeah. And have you ever had any problems installing Magic Lantern on multiple cards? I ask because I have. I have not, uh, but I have had issues uh, with renaming the card. If I renamed the card, it would uh, change something with the uh, w one of the files and it wouldn't recognize the card anymore. So I, I, I reinstalled and I realized that uh, um, I could have just done a firmware update on the camera itself and then it would have recognized the, uh, the, the Magic Lantern again. But I, I thought I just had to reinstall the uh, firmware, but it was, uh, yeah, that was problematic, was changing the, the card name on the computer. Gotcha. But I haven't had any problems with multiple cards running Magic Lantern. So how many hours of footage would you say you've captured with Magic Lantern RAW? I've, got, I've gotten maybe five hours of, it, of footage so far, but it's, it really adds up quickly because you're at about 50 megabytes per second on, on, the, on, the, bit, on the bit rate. So it's, it really adds up. How do you handle all of that uh, data? Well, first, I, I was working uh, exclusively in um, the Adobe After Effects using uh, Adobe Camera Raw, which was fine. Uh, but now I'm working in a simpler workflow, which is with uh, DaVinci Resolve. I, I prefer that much more. Um, but 
yeah, first I just uh, convert the cinema DNG file for uh, DaVinci to, to understand and import into DaVinci and render from there basically after the color correction, color grading. I'm really just uh, using it to get it to where I want in terms of the color and then exporting to Premiere or to another okay. editor. But I, I mean, uh, I think in the future it, I could see myself using DaVinci exclusively as a non-linear editor, yeah. And are you using DaVinci uh, Lite or the full package? The, the Lite package. What does the footage look like? I, I'm really satisfied with it. Uh, of course, there are problems with uh, anti-aliasing and more, but uh, I'm planning to purchase a, a filter f for that problem. But uh, I, I'm really happy, really happy with the dynamic range of the colors. And uh, for me, it's fantastic. It has a real um, film look to it. It looks like something between 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter. It, it's really, it really looks fantastic. So you like the dynamic range. Now, one of the things that uh, right. I've seen many times uh, in comparisons when using RAW versus the H.264 codec is that mm -hmm. the output seems to be much, much sharper. Have you had that experience? It, it is sharper, but it's not too sharp because I don't like when the, the, the footage is too sharp. It looks, uh, I don't know, sterile or it has a nice... Uh, amount of detail, but it's also soft like cinema. It, I really like how, <laughs> how it translates. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you're serious about working with raw video on the 50D, you need to get multiple cards which can read at a very, read and write at a very high rate. Um, I, I would also recommend having a backup camera and uh, just keeping an eye on the temperature gauge which is built in to the camera and just having fun with the camera <laughs> experimenting when you yeah. say the temperature gauge is built into the camera do you mean that magic lantern has the ability to read that temperature right it's in celsius so anything above 50 i i think would be uh time to to give it a rest but uh, yeah it's it's on the bottom of the screen so it's it's right there for you alex has this experience uh made you feel that the next time you go out uh, uh, on a film that you would want to get a different camera? Uh, I mean, what you're able to do with a, a still camera that's seven years old and shoot in RAW is pretty amazing. And yet, there are trade-offs, as you've already articulated. So Yeah, there are trade-offs, exactly. I mean, of course, it would be nice to work in a 2K or 4K. Uh, this is sl slightly less than Full HD, but... It really translate, translates well for, uh, for example, web series or for, for, for almost anything, it translates pretty well. But it, it, again, it's not full HD, so what, it would be nice. It? it comes out to about 1600, I believe, is the width. As opposed to 1920. So something, above, 1920. So something above 720p. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it, 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 it's, it, it's almost full HD, but it, it looks really good on most of the monitors. And, yeah. and you don't have a problem with dropped frames, anything like that? I have not had any problems with the dropped frames, but uh, when it overheats, it will start. <laughs> it's to, called dropped drop camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Of course, with RAW, you can control the exposure. You can control, um, you know, with, in, in terms of the highlights. And it's a shadows. lot easier to yeah. recover uh, detail. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, coming from still photography world myself, uh, HD and its limitations in an H.264 codec are appalling. I mean, you can only move the, the <laughs> levers of the wheel a little bit before it goes. <laughs> so, yeah, so RAW nice. really does give you that advantage. But let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. uh, have, how often have you found that you have not been able to capture the detail first crack out of the barrel? That is to say... Uh, that you really needed to push things in post as opposed to just capturing the correct exposure at the time of uh, filming? I think there's a lot of built-in tools with Magic Lantern which help you to uh, set the correct exposure. I usually get the exposure that I want when I'm filming, but I just uh, do a little bit of highlights recovery and 
things like that, enhancing the shadows. How, how do you expose uh, in this set of circumstances and what tools, what uh, uh, exposure assist do you use from uh, Magic Lantern? There's a raw histogram, which is really helpful. There's a lot of um, different overlays which you can use. Basically, if it's overexposed, it'll show black. If it's underexposed, it'll show white pixels. So it gives you a lot of clues as to how you're doing with exposure. Other thing that uh, can be helpful is to use a picture profile, which uh, is similar to raw video. And the best picture style that I found is called CineStyle, uh, because it's very neutral in terms of the colors and the contrast. So it's, it's very similar to what the raw video will look like. And that helps to set the exposure as well. The most, the most similar uh, camera is going to be the Mark III, the 5D Mark III. But uh, I somehow prefer the 50D in terms of that softness it gives to the image. I, I, as I said before, I don't like to have like a very sharp uh, image, which kind of can be distracting. When you're shooting RAW with files that large, you need a pretty speedy uh, computer and hard disk. So what does that look like in your situation? For our feature film, we're planning to uh, use about, I think it's eight terabytes of footage. Wow. And we'll need to we'll need to back that up. So we're looking at 16 terabytes of <laughs> hard drive space. Well, Alex, I appreciate uh, you sharing your experience with Magic Lantern on a 50D, a Canon 50D, a seven-year-old, almost <laughs> eight-year-old still camera, which in some ways, as you've said, you prefer to the 5D Mark III, and mm -hmm. uh, appreciate the candor uh, with which you described the challenges as well as the benefits. All right. Thank you very much. I, I had a great time talking right. with you. Well, for Planet 5D, everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone, Alexander Beasley. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. So I'm, I'm coming in from Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. It's a former Soviet Republic in Central Asia. Um, I've been here for about four years now. Ah, where were you before that? I'm from the U.S., uh, St. Louis, Missouri. My parents are American. I'm also, my citizenship is American. Well, you've got an excellent accent for just uh, <laughs> four years in Kyrgyzstan. That's fantastic. Right. What brought you to Kyrgyzstan? Um, basically, I had uh, some friends from my university, and they just told me about their country, and it was really interesting. So I came here. First, I was uh, teaching English, and then I opened a recording studio, and then I got into the film industry.